My Ram Power Wagon barely fits in the garage. If I do anything with the suspension or add larger tires, it's gonna be tough. I might have to actually air down to get in here. But that's not what we're talking about in this video today. Today, we've got a really cool project we're gonna be doing. We're gonna be adding a frame-mounted light bar, some new lights that are gonna be awesome off-road, and an auxiliary switch system. Pretty cool upgrades, all necessary stuff to make our adventures a little better. Stay tuned. Welcome to Trail Recon, I'm Brad, and today we're in the garage doing some projects on the Ram Power Wagon, something many of you guys have been requesting. The challenge has been so many things are on back order, but finally we got some stuff and we got some things we can install. Today I think is going to be a really cool project. So the first thing we're going to be talking about is an S-Pod auxiliary system, which is going to one, help with these off-road lights that we're mounting today, but two, also any other accessories that we get ready to mount, it's going to make wiring and operating much, much easier. So we'll talk a little little bit about that. I've got a very cool new product. It's going to allow us to mount some lights, make everything nice and clean, and that's going to allow us to not have to drill any holes into the bumper. And then we've got some brand new lights from my good friends over at KC Highlights. All right, before we talk about the bar and the lights, let's talk a little bit about the S-Pod Bantam system. My son and I actually were in the garage yesterday just kind of brainstorming how we were going to do all this, and we went ahead and installed the S-Pod. Now, this is not brand new. I actually pulled this out of my Gladiator, have been hanging on to it because I knew that I was gonna install it here on the Power Wagon. And so a couple things, this is a super easy install. You basically take the module, you hook it up to the battery, and then you wire the module using a network cable into the cab of the vehicle and you mount up the HD panel. So we've mounted the S-Pod Bantam right on top of the fuse box. It's a very clean look. And then we had to find a place to go in through the firewall in the power wagon and there's actually a little plate there that's bolted up using some 15 millimeter bolts. My son climbed up in there and struggled with those bolts, but we got the plate off. We drilled a hole in the plate. We put a grommet on there and then put the wire through and then I had to figure out where to put the HD switch panel. Let's hop in the truck and I'll kind of talk you through my thought process and how this went. Now, inside the truck, finding a good home for the S-Pod HD panel, well, it takes a lot of consideration. We have a lot of places because we've got so much room in here, but there's pros and cons to a lot of it. So my son and I actually brainstormed, I don't know, we were in here for a good 30 to 45 minutes just thinking about things, putting it in a lot of different spots, and there are some good options but then it requires maybe drilling some holes and do you want to drill holes in your plastic? I was thinking about putting it in the overhead console here. That would be really super clean and running the wires all the way through the A-pillar. I just didn't want to commit to drilling holes up there just yet. And then there's options down here in the lower dash section, but I didn't want that to get in the way of my knees. I could mount it up here on top of the dash, but then you've got the wire running. But there's some options down here that I think really work out well. And so where I ended up mounting it was just down here in the center. And that's nice and clean and it's kind of out of the way. And the thing for me is the S-Pod is not something I need to get to in an emergency. So if I have to reach down a little bit to access the buttons, it's not a big deal. The other cool thing is I actually have two HD panels. And so the S-Pod Bantam allows me to run two of these. So once we get things going on the back of the truck, I can actually set this one up in the back of the truck and I can control all my accessories with either that one in here or this one that should be in the back, which is pretty cool. All right, let's talk about the light bar and the lights we're gonna be installing. All right, so the first thing we're gonna be installing is this cool light bar from a company out of Phoenix, Arizona called Randy Ellis Designs. And this is a very nice option because it prevents us from having to do any kind of drilling into the bumper. And I had thought originally, I was like, well, I guess we could just drill a couple holes and mount some lights, the bumper is steel, but I really didn't wanna do that. And this is gonna make things very nice and clean. Now this is gonna mount in to the Power Wagon's tow hooks with a couple little brackets here, some supplied bolts, should be a very easy install. And the cool thing about this light bar bracket is that it has four individual plates here where we can mount four lights and that's what we're gonna be doing. But if you do want to do like a light bar, a single light bar, that is an option and they sell an adapter for that. But I think the lights we're gonna be installing on this are gonna be super cool. Let's take a look at those. 
Now when it comes to off-road lighting, no surprise here, I've been working with the guys at KC Highlights for years, and so I called them up and said, hey look, I'm looking for something new and innovative for the Power Wagon, and they sent me out their brand new Flex Era 4 lights. These things are cool, and they're gonna be perfect for the truck. Now let's talk about these just a little bit. Just picking these up, they are very heavy and very durable. Lots of fins back here to keep cooling. The lens is nice and clear. And there are some options because this is a spot beam pattern. They provided a different lens here so I can do kind of a wide pattern or combo pattern. So I think what I'm gonna do is maybe do a split. I have four lights here. So I think what we'll do is maybe do a combo on the sides and then the spots on the center. I think that's gonna be perfect setup for this light bar system. Now, these are supposed to put out a massive amount of power, which should be pretty cool. So when we get this all done, we'll go out tonight and we will check it out on the trail and just see how bright these are. Also, the cool thing about these Flex Air Lights is they have an amber backlight in them. Now, with the amber backlight, you have a couple options. One is you can wire it up to your daytime running lights. So it, when you turn your vehicle on, your daytime running lights come on, that amber light comes on. That may be something I do down the road, but just today for a little bit of simplicity, I think I'm just going to separately wire that running light to the S-Pod. Now, they do supply an entire wire loom here, so you don't need an S-Pod system to do this. Everything you need is right here in this kit. And they've also supplied some other cool stuff. We've got some clear lenses, a protective lens. We've got some amber lenses. Amber is really nice to have if you're in a dusty or snowy or foggy conditions. There's some color options here. So it comes with this gold ring, but they do have a red ring. I think we're definitely gonna do the red. Everything you need here, this is gonna be super cool. I can't wait to get these mounted up and to see how they look out on the trail tonight. All right, let's get started. Installing this light bar I thought was going to be a simple job with just a couple bolts that needed to be removed on the frame where the recovery hooks are attached. So with my son's help and some basic hand tools, we removed the 18 and 24 millimeter bolts per the instructions where the light bar plate will be installed and then tried sliding the light bar into place. And tried again. And again. The instructions said the bar just needed to be rolled into place. Well, after many unsuccessful attempts, we came to the conclusion this wasn't going to happen. Now, many of you know I'm picky about instructions and the ones supplied with this light bar, well, not so great. When you spend a good money for a product like this, I really wish manufacturers would do their best in helping the customer install these with some clear instructions, pictures, and diagrams. Those are always a plus for visual learners like me. All right, let me explain how we got this sorted. Now, one thing I've always tried to do here on Trail Recon is keep it real. When we have successes, we share those. When we have challenges, we share those. We got a little challenge the last uh, about an hour or so because this bar has not been fitting into place. The tow hooks are just too big for the bar to fit in these small holes. Now the instructions say all we needed to do was remove the front tow hook bar and just wiggle it and everything should slide right in, not the case at all. The challenge is, is that we've removed the bolts already that hold the winch in place. And so if we removed the last bolt, that holds the tow hook in, it also supports the winch. So we're just struggling with trying to figure out how to make this all work. I mean, we were really working hard trying to get that bar to fix as per the instructions, but no luck. So uh, thankfully I called the guys over at Randy Ellis Design Group and they picked up the phone and had great support. Today's a holiday, so that's awesome. Uh, they said, look, we need to make some modifications to the instructions. We know we've got it. Uh, here's what you need to do. So what we needed to do was mount in their supplied plate that came with there and put in that lower smaller bolt and that will hold the plate in place and hold the winch in place and then pull the last tow hook supporting bolt out and remove the tow hooks. And now we should be able to slide the bar in and then slide the tow hooks in and then bolt everything up. So look, when you're doing stuff in your garage, when you're modifying your vehicle, sometimes you're gonna have challenges. It's not a big deal. The fun part is trying to figure it out. All right, let's get this finished. So after removing both tow hooks and ensuring the winch was supported with the 18 millimeter bolt in place, I was able to easily install the light bar and then reinstalled the tow hooks and got everything bolted right up. 
A huge thanks to Randy Ellis Design Group for the customer support. I really appreciate it. All right, my son and I are done installing the light bar and this thing is sturdy. And nah, once we figured out that the tow hooks needed to come out, this went in with no problems. Now we're gonna install the lights which are gonna look really good up here and gonna give us a whole lot of visibility. But before we wire this up, I'm gonna swap out the bezels and lenses, wire it up, then we'll take it out on the trail and we'll see how well these things work. Swapping out the lenses on the two lights that I'll be mounting on the outside is a very easy process. Just be sure when you're putting it all back together that the O-rings are seated very well. I like that you can customize the accent ring and I may be actually even doing a little more customizing in the future. Let's see. All right, now to wire these up. And when you open up the supplied wire loom, it seems like a lot, but it really is pretty straightforward if you take your time. One thing I didn't notice early on was that Casey actually provides a three-way switch that allows you to go easily from the backlight amber to fully on, which is very nice to have. But because I have the S-Pod, well, just about all this stuff was cut off and discarded. All I need is the positive and negative wire and the amber power wire. I chose to run these wires between the bumper and the grill. And if you feel around in there, you will notice that there's actually some pass-through sections. It's not easy to show on film, but trust me, they're there that make running wires through here very easy. Okay, with all four lights wired up, it's time for a test. What a great project in the garage. We got the S-Pod in, we got the bar mounted, and the lights are all hooked up and wired and everything works. This looks super cool and it's gonna be really helpful when we are getting to camp late at night or are we just gonna wanna do a night run. This is gonna be awesome. I'm excited. As soon as that sun sets, we're gonna hit the trail and then we're gonna go see how well these perform. These, these look great. One thing I was personally curious about was if there would be any loss of visibility of the front facing camera. And you can see here that yes, the back of the lights are visible, but I still have plenty of view from the camera. So I'm pretty happy with this. Once the sun set, it was time to light them up. I love the look of the backlit ambers. It really complements the Power Wagon Ambers running lights. This is gonna be cool. As for the full power of these Flex Air 4s, well, they are extremely bright. It is a massive difference when you power these up and having the mixed lens pattern, I think, was the way to go. These are perfect for seeing what lay ahead in this beast of a truck. I hope you have enjoyed hanging out with me in the garage. I've got more upgrades coming to this truck and the other vehicles in my driveway soon, and I'll be getting them out on the dirt in no time at all. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.